stuck here and he's working from home yeah, absolutely oh and it's nice to have some time as well we were talking about this earlier on we were saying that although our diaries now are a little bit like eh, eh, you know we yeah. are looking at the fact that we're spending time with our loved ones and we're having time to think about what we're doing next <laughs> yes absolutely because oh, i was like i've been reading up on you about the tour that you did of the life of the international housewife celebrity what was that all about well, so it's called There's Always Time for a Cocktail. <laughs> of course. You know. And the essential idea was that I wanted to share my story of my life growing up as a little boy, closeted, you know, and ended up marrying a woman and the whole gamut uh, of, of not loving and identifying with who I really was. And there's fun, there's humor, and there's some serious tones but the idea is that I'm sharing my life story so that maybe somebody out there who could identify with anything that I might be talking about, about might say, oh, I have a place too. Yeah. And really, that's, that was my passion to do that, that particular. And of course, my life keeps changing. So it's always, you know, it's, it's always relevant. So, you know, um, it continues to change and I can, I can bring it out the road. And it's, it's fun. You know, I, I, I love that we live in a world right now where there's so much social media and i think the people that rise to the top tell the truth about who they are a hundred percent and i think that's one of the things that you really when you go into the the um the social aspect of it and, and reality tv and things i think the people that come across the best are the ones that are genuine they're the ones that people can relate to the most um, and that was you down to a T. I mean, every time you came on, you and Ginger Minge had me in hysterics. You were literally <laughs> like, it was taking a snapshot of me and Special K. We were like looking at all the young ones going like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we, we, we made ourselves the uh, bitter old lady brigade. <laughs> and I think a lot of that, we, we just were gals that worked in the clubs. We worked for, a, you know, for tips exactly. yeah. and, and I think it's wonderful now you know we have so many queens that are, are budding from YouTube and uh, you know insta snatch and twatter and face place <laughs> you know and honestly I think it's wonderful and I don't believe that there's one right way to do drag oh, yeah. now, I definitely thought that at first I was like you know you have to do this and you have to do that yeah, and now yeah. I realize there's no wrong way no no. Yeah. And it's a colourful rainbow, isn't it? You know, at the end of the day, there's so much different talents out there and everybody's got their part to play. And I think also, I think that they learn stuff from us, but we learn stuff from them. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I cannot believe, you know, well, you know, it's so funny. When we came back from filming season seven, I was doing my makeup with my eyelashes all the way down my cheek. And Darian Lake was like, girl, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, well, Trixie Mattel. She goes, you're not Trixie Mattel. <laughs> that That's is one. I'm terrible because I'm a real technophobe. I'm the one out of the two of us that cannot do anything technical. I am just hideous. You know, the sound desk, I'm like, okay, give me the mic. I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> same, same. I'm so lucky that I have Mr. Davis to yeah. do so much of the technology. And he'll walk me through it. And I'll be like, now, how do I cut and paste? <laughs> you know, that's me. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's exactly like. And he's just like, no. So, Kasha, you were. Are you still doing it? Are you still doing? I mean, obviously not at the moment because we're on the lockdown. Right. But you used to read in the, uh, for the children on the drag hour and things, which I think is adorable. So to do story time is a dream for me because it's not just about talking about gender or sexuality or anything like that. It really never comes up. It's about if you happen to see somebody different in the world treat them with kindness yeah and i love it so now of course technology we switched to doing 
our story time live on Facebook and Instagram, and we're going to go on YouTube live. We've done 18 readings. Uh, Sunday will be our 18th reading. We do it Wednesday and uh, Sundays live. And of course, it stays on Facebook so people can watch it and later. It's just been so wonderful because the kids just, first of all, it gives the parents a, a second to go in the kitchen and have some Chardonnay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it just, you know, it gives the kids that moment where, you know, we're talking about it. And I have found that people are responding, not just kids, some adults around the world are saying, thank you for this. It's, it's you know, children's books are written for adults. Oh, yeah, written of course. To entertain the adult, you know, while they're trying to put that kid to sleep. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, so you know fantastic is that you're creating this platform where people are looking up to you as a strong figure. You're coming in and you're just saying, hey, look, this is who I am. You can be anything that you want to be. Like, listen, take a leaf out of our book and, and, and come into the world. Well, I think drag queens are so magical. And of course, it's our industry and it's our peers. And every single one I see, I find something fascinating because they're, they're expressing something about themselves that either they that was suppressed by themselves or someone else, or they're just celebrating something about themselves. So I think that's sort of magical. And I love that we can share that with kids because as you know, as performers, so many of our audience members, you know, are young women mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and trying to find their way and trying not to just be the status quo or what the magazines say. Yeah. And, we're, and we're being, you know, we're doing whatever we feel and I, that inspires them. Yeah. I think, and too, I think that when we were growing up, especially oneself, I know that being odd, you know, you always felt odd. You felt different. You didn't feel as though you fit it in. And suddenly to have people out there, you know, in the magical world there of like, oh my God, I identify with that. Oh my God, this is like me. I think you don't feel so lonely. And I think that that's such a lovely time that we're in. Do, do you agree? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, RuPaul says, you know, we, it's our tribe. Um, yeah. And if you think about, you know, there was a time when drag was just in a gay bar, not that that's a bad thing, but that now we can open that opportunity for more people to see it and for people to be accepting of the fact that we're just having fun and we're yes. expressing ourselves and yeah. supporting one another. Yeah, always. So obviously it's going to be like this platform for lots of children. Like when you were growing up, who were like your inspirations and who, who did you look up to, to, to kind of give you that drive to say, yeah, that's what I want to do? Well, it's interesting. My first inspiration, I look back at some of my childhood. My mother saved everything. My mother was my first inspiration. She was my queen. I drew every picture of her with a crown. I drew, you know, it was, it was very much the mama's boy, but I was, she was everything to me. And she knew I was different. She knew that there was a, at least this emotional kind of sensitivity about me. And she celebrated that. So and my she, mother, my grandmother, oh my gosh. So back in the like 30s and 40s, it was the vaudeville time. And she performed on the stage as a whistler. And oh. she would, yeah. So she would go and host a show like we do hosting a drag yeah. show. Mm -hmm. So she would host these cabaret shows and she would whistle and look glamorous. And I would look at these pictures and I used to say, that is what I want to do. <laughs> and I, of course, I couldn't even tell anybody that's what I wanted to do. It was yeah. a big secret because you could, a boy couldn't do that. Now, what would you say is your next journey? What do you want to do next? You know, on your bucket list of things to do, you would go, right, this is what I want to do next. This is my next big thing. Oh, well, okay. Personally, I can't wait to be a grandmother. Uh, oh. Our youngest daughter is uh, engaged and our oldest is dating. So I keep pushing them, like, let's have kids. And my husband is like, um, they should get married first. I'm like, I know. But, uh, <laughs> so that is, a, yeah. Uh, you know, professionally, I'm having so much fun finding my way, you know. Yeah. I, I didn't expect, I've written two children's books because of story time. I really loved Mr. Rogers when I was a kid. And I thought, wow, maybe a drag queen could be campy and have a TV show that's a drag queen being oh silly, God. but yet honest like Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah. 
Mrs. Kasha Davis, where did your drag name come from? Ooh, that, I, I love that question. question. You've got Mr. Davis, but I want to know how did all that come about? I love that question because it's a, another personal thing. So when I decided I was going to name myself, uh, the, my friend Ambrosia Salad, who was uh, the host, said, no, another drag queen has to name you. I said, no, no, no. I want to do first pet, first street. She goes, really? That's like, you could be more creative than that. Well, Kasha was an angry white poodle that I grew up with that only liked me. And Davis was the, day, the street I grew up on. So I said, you know, I want to be Kasha Davis. And so then I had been working at this nightclub a couple nights a week and uh, just having a grand time. And the owner had strippers come and they were all backstage and they're all, you know, showing off. And I was like, oh you know, embarrassed. And I was like, oh, I'm married. I'm married. And they were like, calm down. And I'm like, what? Well, and so, you know, they're all checking them out. And, then, and so finally, the owner got on the microphone and said, I was up next. Ladies and gentlemen, the housewife herself, Mrs. Kasha Davis. And I was like, I love it. Because everybody <laughs> was introduced as Miss Darien Lake, Miss Pandora, you know, yeah. pretty you know, single, available. And I was like, no, I'm Mrs. Kasha Davis. And I thought when I, it's sort of like Mrs. Doubtfire or Dame Edna, you know, that Mrs. Grand kind of lady. It's very strong, uh, isn't it? Yeah. And so I thought, I'm gonna go with it. And that's really where it all began. Oh, it's brilliant. It's amazing. You are just absolutely, just genuine. And I think that's the thing. I think what we said on about that this art, very can be quite shallow you know there can be quite you know it's the tits and the teeth and the eyelashes and the hair but meeting genuine queens on the journey you just think oh, we've all got a heart you know and that's the thing isn't it and I think that you have genuinely well thank you I really appreciate that I think you, you too I mean now we get to be friends you know we've, we've chit a little bit and <laughs> Stay in touch. Well, next time you come over to England because you were here in London Brighton with your tour weren't you? Yes um, and how did that go? How did London and Brighton treat you? I was so I was at Bar Broadway. Yeah. And um, they had a um, the Fringe Festival. The Theatre Fringe yeah. Festival was happening. And so, you know, it was a wonderful experience for me because, first of all, it's beautiful there. And second, the you know, the beach and I got, what is it called? A chippy? The a ice chippy. cream? Yeah. Yeah. Chippy. I had to have a few uh, because they were so good. And uh, I would go for walks in the day <laughs> and then we would do, we would try to get people to come and see the show. And, you know, what, several nights were good, good, good crowds. And then there were a couple nights where we were small crowds. But I'm from theater. I'm like, okay, we're going to give them a great show. And we okay. did. And, and I would, I just, Mr. Davis did not come with me for that one. So I'd love to bring him back. And I went and I saw a psychic there. Um, who, who was just really, really, it was just a wonderful experience for me. And I think one of the days I started to get sad, a little homesick, and I was like, oh, you know, we don't have a lot of tickets sold for tonight. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. and I sat in the room and I looked out the window and I was like, you're sitting in Brighton up here on the other side of the world and people know you. Calm yeah. down, you know, get <laughs> yeah. over yourself. But it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, and Bar Broadway, we had such a hoot. There, I have a photo. There's a bunch of ladies downstairs with their bottles of wine playing the piano. We were just, oh, we had a great time. Oh, oh no. Uh, when you uh, come back to the UK, you need to see us. You need to come and see us. <laughs> now, what, which club are you at? So we're, we're in Norwich, and we kind of well, travel around, don't we? So we're based in Norwich, but we go wherever I'll have us really. <laughs> so that's the main thing. So yeah, if you're ever in like the uh, southeast well, of England, let us know. Oh, and it's been uh, absolutely adorable talking to you, Angel. You are just so beautiful. And thank you. Love to you all. <laughs> and, um, and we'll meet up when you're here. Let's do it. I think the three of us would have a fun time doing a show together. So the next oh, time I'm there, we'll stay in touch and we'll do it. And we'll put on we'll put on the best show ever. Yes, we Take will. Oh, thank you so much for taking part and lots of love to Mr. Davis and the whole family. Uh, thank you so much.
Stay later, gorgeous. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.